Okay, so prior to starting the motor, there's really three things we have to be aware of. Two will completely prevent the motor from starting, and the third one is not recommended. So the two things that will prevent the motor from starting, one is our safety lanyard. So this guy here, this red cord, is meant to clip to our belt buckle. And what, that hap what happens then is as we're traveling along, for whatever reason, if the driver ever fell or whatever happened to them, as they fall, this would pull out and immediately stop the motor. Now, the motor will not start until this is plugged back in. If you try and start the motor, the motor would actually crank like it's trying to start and beep at you. So we can actually do that now. Ignition, turn the key again. Motor's trying to start and it's beeping. The first thing that should tell you is to plug in your safety lanyard. So we'll do that. The second reason why it would not start is actually if the motor is, is uh, in forward or reverse. So with our control box here, straight up vertical is neutral, and we can't get out of neutral to forward or reverse until we lift this lever up. So when we lift the lever up and go into gear and try and start the motor, we'll have no response from the motor whatsoever. The motor will only start when you slide this back into neutral. So make sure we're in neutral, our safety lanyard's in. Two things that'll stop the motor from starting. The third thing is we don't want to start the motor dry, what we were talking about earlier. We want to make sure the motor's got water pressure and it's inside the water before we start it. Same button as what we had at the back of the motor is our power trim and tilt. So this will trim the motor up and down from the helm position. Um, what we also have here is a fast idle. It's a bit more of a two-stroke thing again. This used to pump more fuel, like a, like a cold start sort of scenario where you could start it with a bit more of a um, higher idle rev. But with the fuel injected four strokes, there's no need for that. So it's not something we're gonna to use too much. Just like your car, one turn of the key will start up our gauges and our gauges will give us certain information um, depending on the gauges you actually have. But we might be able to see over here this will have our engine revs, which is our RPM, our engine hours, our speed, our battery voltage. By pushing this button here, we can have our trip calculator, the time of the day, the battery voltage. Now, with this particular set of gauges, this is a fuel indicator rather than a dead accurate gauge. So you do wanna make sure that you do fill it up before you go out to a, you know, a certain amount of fuel that you might need for the day. The bars on the fuel will rise up as the tank's fuller and fuller, just like what our trim is over here at the moment. So as we put fuel in it, the bars will go up, and as the, the bars go down, we're using fuel. This side here is our power trim and tilt. So when we're in a towing position like we are now, the trim buttons go all the way up. When we're gonna use the boat, this will tell us roughly how high the motor is. So as I push the down button, we'll get to a stage where these bars start to go down like so. Rule of thumb is unless you're in shallow water, when you're idling and the boat's not up on the plane and going, we wanna have our trim as low as possible. The only time we'll have our trim up a little bit higher when we're going slow is if we're in shallower water and we wanna have maximum draft when we're not gonna be as, as, um, as buoyant as possible. So if we were going dead slow when we're approaching like a beach or a, um, like a sandbar or something, we're gonna park up onto it, we'd be just in gear, back into neutral, going as slow as possible. So with your control box, when you're in gear, the prop's turning, you'll have great steering and, and feel of the boat, but when you go back into neutral, you'll still have a little bit of momentum. So you don't always have to be in gear to be going forward when you're going slow. So if you're parking, if you're going back on the trailer, approaching the beach, the slower you go, the softer you hit things. So we can be in gear, yep, set ourselves up, back in the neutral, the momentum still going, back in the gear, yep, a little bit more power, back in the neutral, and the boat will just slowly approach whatever you're approaching. So if we were going dead slow, approaching the beach, we might trim, our, trim up to three or four, so the motor's up a little bit higher and it's, it's, it's um, got less chance of hitting the bottom. But when we are approaching to go out in the bay and get up on the plane and get going, it's a good idea to always have your trim down to one to two bars. And why we do that is if we use this as our boat for the moment, and we're sitting here, that's the front of the boat, that's the back of the boat, the lower the trim is, the flatter and easier the boat will get up on the plane and get going. 
Once, um, if, if we took off with our trim on four, and so at the back here, the bow would lift right up and carry on and it would take um, quite a lot of speed to get the boat up and get settled. If we have our trim down to one or two, the boat will get up nice and effortlessly, get up on top of the water and then it's planing. So whenever we take off, we want our trim relatively low, maximum efficiency on top of the water and going. Now, a rule of thumb and something that's, that works as a, a bit of a guide is once we're up and going, our rev gauge here, so 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, once we're over 3,000 RPM, the boat will be planing typically, be on top of the water and be going. Once we're on top of the water and going, to get the maximum efficiency out of the hull and the best performance, we're actually gonna give the motor a little bit of trim up as we go faster. And a good rule of thumb is at 4,000 RPM, you'll have around three to four bars of trim. 5,000 RPM, four to five bars of trim. Go back down to 3,000 RPM, two to three bars of trim. If your revs and your trim gauge are at similar numbers when you're planing, you'll find the boat will sit quite efficient. So again, if this was our boat and it's stuck to the water, and this is the back and this is the front, as we're going along and we trim the boat up, it'll break free and get the boat on top of the water a little bit and it'll create less drag. If we're not dragging the whole hull through the water, we're more efficient. And if the water's breaking just here, we're also driving on a wider surface of the hull. As the boat goes forward, it gets narrower. The narrower it is, the sharper the V, the more it can sort of lean either way as we're underway. As we trim up, we're driving on a wider surface of the hull and the boat will be on top of the water and going. A good uh, indicator that you've trimmed the motor too high when you're going along, if we're looking for maximum efficiency, is when the boat starts to porpoise along a little bit. So if you're going down Ilden or wherever you are and you're cruising down the river and the, the front of the boat's just sort of bouncing up and down uh, by itself, by trimming the motor down a little bit, it'll just settle. Uh, where I like to look for the, the water as we're going along, if we're up and we're going, if I look at the window here, I like to see the spray off the water somewhere between where I'm sitting in the seat and the nav light. If it's somewhere in this instance where I look at the window and the water's spraying at the side, and it's in this sort of ballpark, that means I've got it pretty well set. If I trim up too high, it'll porpoise. If I trim down too low, my steering will be heavy, the boat will really lean when it turns, and it'll be quite, um, quite a bit more effort for the motor. You might even find at three and a half, four thousand 4,000 RPM, I'm trimmed all the way down, the boat's sitting dead flat, I'm dragging all this hull through. By trimming the motor up, you'll hear the motor actually harmonically sound better, and your speed on your RPM will actually increase if we're creating less drag. So we can talk about trim all day and the benefits of trimming the boat correctly and what it'll do to the actual package and how much better it'll be. But rule of thumb, trim down when you take off and get on the plane. As we get up, give it a little bit of trim. If the boat is sitting somewhere in this sort of instance from the spray, I'm happy. It starts to porpoise, we put too much trim into it. And that's enough for today. While we're talking about the switch panels, we'll turn on our sounder. Um, popular brands like Lowrance, Garmin, Simrad, Hummingbird, all work quite similar. They're very easy to use these days. So we're gonna turn this one on for the moment and we'll get back to it. We have a switch panel down here. So the switch panels will be relevant to what the boat's got inside it, but typically you'll always have a bilge pump and a lot of bilge pumps, you should ask the, the person that's doing the handover if it has a float switch. What that means is I'll have a bilge pump where I can manually turn it on myself the bilge pump is in the lowest, deepest cavity of the hull. So if we were in the water for a long period of time, let's say we had it at a marina for three days and it was raining, and we get to the boat, we have an inspection port, which I should have shown you. I'll show you the inspection port in a moment, and that's the bottom of the hull. Basically, it's the inside of where the drain plug is. So if we're at the back of the boat and look through the drain plug hole, we're looking into the bilge. And now if that had water in it, and there's no way to get that water out because we can't undo the drain plug, we're already in the water. We could turn on the bilge pump and that's like a vacuum that'll suck the water out of the boat and spray it out the side. Um, a float switch means when the water gets to a certain height, the bilge pump will sensor that and turn on automatically. So that's something that you wanna be aware of depending on your package and what you end up buying. 